Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Blitz Bowl from Games Workshop. Now this was sent to me by Games Workshop to review, and Blitz Bowl is a game of gladiatorial sports mayhem, otherwise known as you're playing football where you stomp each other to death in the stands as you try to make your way towards victory. Speaking of victory, in Blitz Bowl the goal is two teams are facing off against one another to ultimately get as many points as possible, as many points as possible really being defined as either being ahead of your opponent by 10 points at any point in time. If you ever get fully 10 points ahead of your opponent, then ultimately you'll win the game. Alternatively, when this deck of challenge cards runs out, having the most points at the end of that, that's the other way to win Blitz Bowl. And so the goal is to get as many points and either, well, blitz your way towards those points or just be ahead of your opponent. Now in the game, you're going to get four points for every touchdown you throw, but you're also going to get a chunk of points for completing challenges as the game progresses. Challenge will give you different game states, whether offensive, taking people down, swapping control of the ball, making a risky throw, carrying the ball. They'll all give you different reasons to engage in certain plays for anywhere between one and three points, which can make them sometimes almost as viable and almost as rewarding as a touchdown without even having the downside of touchdowns can take a player out of play on your side. And so there's a game of constant trying to adjust to what the game is trying to have you do for the spectators cheering and storming in the, in the sidelines versus ultimately just going for a class a game of football. Now in the game, you're going to be taking three actions every single round. In Blitz Bowl, each of your characters, each of the teams takes three actions at a time. You're going to be all printed on this player right over here. And over here, the actions you have access to will range depending on the state of your players. See, in Blitz Bowl, players are engaged in one of a few states at any given time. They might be stomped down on the ground. They might be out of play in your reserve or, or in your reserve over here. Uh, they might alternatively be open or alternatively be marked. A marked player is a player that is next to another player on the table. So, for example, these players are both marked because they're engaged with one another. Versus these players are open because they are not touching one another, and that will affect what they can do across the course of the game. An open player has a lot more flexibility, a lot more freedom, but a whole lot less violence. They're the kind of player who can run across the board over here, picking up the ball as they slowly, if we had this person over here, you can run across the pitch, picking up the ball, and slowly making your way across, well, there we go, we can't even go there because then we'd be taken. See, this is the challenge of the game. When you are an open player, you can go ahead and run across the board, which if you have a situation like this, you can go ahead and make your way across the board, hopefully making your way into the finish line if you have enough movement speed with that player's stats. The downside is positioning on the board is everything. Right now, whenever you are an open player, you can never make your way touching another base of an opponent's open player over here and so over here right now if I went here I'd be touching this player which means I have to be mindful of how and where I navigate across the board or how and where the opponent positions their players as they attempt to constrict me as they attempt to stop me from being able to actually score those touchdowns. In the game you're trying to either get the ball and make your way to the touchdown or alternatively stomp your opponents into the ground so that they are less in your way as they go and this is where you have those actions as you go through the game. An open player can make a run action, which is usually the most most uh, direct movement across the board. They can mark another player by moving two spaces into another player. So for example, I can go ahead, let's pretend we don't have the ball over here. I can go ahead and move up to one or two within range of another player touching that opponent's base, but I can only do that one or two spaces. If I'm an open player, I can never ever end up touching adjacent to those players. Alternatively, you can go ahead and throw the ball. You can pass the ball to another player, engaging in a throw test, which will all be based on the stats of your your specific team and the stats they have for moving, blocking, throwing, and their armor, which is important to stop them from being stomped into oblivion in the dugout. Then a marked player, on the other hand, a marked player has the option to block, which is generally an offensive roll. We're going to grab the block guys over here. You're going to roll a variable number of them depending on the situation, depending on the, the, the stat of the player over there, and then potentially re-roll them depending on your abilities and engage in some form of either pushing an opponent out of the spot, completely failing your roll, or stomping them into the ground, either temporarily where they'll be prone to the ground, or on a slightly more permanent basis where they'll return to their opponent's dugout over there. And then past that, you have sidestep for marked players, which is where you can move one step away from the other player that they're marked with, which is how you get out of being marked. And then finally, prone players can stand up and dugout players can take a reserve action where they re-enter the board. Those are the actions you're playing with when you play through Blitzwall. A simple set of actions in which you are either trying to move across the board, to pick up the ball, to try to throw the ball, passing it to your teammates. Again, you're using the game state over here. If we have this game state over here, you might have a situation, well, let's just go ahead and paint this like this, where you might have a situation where a player wants to go ahead and move, going one, two over here, 
picking up the ball, then taking a throw action where they try to pass it to their teammate because they can't make their way through this impenetrable wall of opposing players and how they're going to get in the way. So you go ahead and you take this little throw marker, decide if you're doing a short or a long throw, modify for players who are in the middle as you go through it, roll your throw dice based on your stack, uh, potentially play a card that's a one. That's a horrible fumble over there. Let's pretend we'll come back to fumble shortly. Let's pretend you actually succeed that roll, pass the player to over here. That's going to be your third action. You moved, you pit, you moved over here. You, sorry, second action. You moved, you picked up, you threw the ball to your teammate, and then they can go ahead and charge into the end zone for a touchdown and four points. Points. That would be a classic turn in Blitz Bowl as you try to figure out to take advantage of the board state, take advantage of the players, take advantage of anything you need, potentially playing cards to re-roll things when you fumble. We'll come to what I mean by that in a second. And that is basically the game. A few other rules to take into account. Things like standing on trap doors can actually have you falling into the dugout when a new ball pops out. It's a very risky place to be right now. You're going to have options such as fumbling, which we just actually saw accidentally. When you fumble, whenever you roll a one, whenever you're trying to pass the ball to a teammate, if you miss the throw, if you miss the throw with, let's say, a two, then the ball will, will bounce from where they are. You'll roll the bounce ball, and then depending on this chart over here, you'll go ahead and see where the ball moves, and so it may fumble out of the way, not really fumble, it may jump out of the way over there, bouncing across the field, forcing them to spend precious time trying to pick it up, which could hurt you. Alternatively, if you ever roll a one in the game, a one means you don't even get the ball past that, you still roll the sky to see where it goes, and that's again a one, but now that's going to be fumbling based on the person throwing the ball instead of where it's going, making it even harder to get where you want to go. There's going to be other rules such as that in the game as far as how there's going to be a whole bunch of advanced rules as well you can get into, but that is basically Blitzball. One thing to cover as far as the challenges go, whenever you earn a challenge in the game, you're going to take the card, and on the back of the card, you have a bonus play, which gives you some sort of way to break the rules, some sort of thing you can do as far as re-rolling dice, as far as jumping into combat more efficiently, as far as taking a full extra action. There are things you can do in the game as you earn the challenge cards, and that is basically the game. Go ahead, take three actions, figure out how to efficiently take those three actions, figure out when you're going for challenge cards, when you're going for touchdowns. Whenever you take a touchdown, your player that, that score that touchdown, that player who makes the way into the end zone, will go into your reserves where you have to spend a precious action bringing them back out. There is the concept of emergency reserves, where every team is going to have an emergency reserves number, which is at the point at which they get a free reserve action to pull someone back into the playing field. Rinse and repeat across a variable number of rounds, either until all the challenge cards are gone, at which point you see as the most points, or alternatively until a player is 10 points ahead of another player. And with that, let's dive into the basic review and all that stuff, starting off with the ease of play. The rulebook for Blitz Bowl is actually very easy to dive into. I find the these Games Workshop rulebooks are, if they have a few of these games, we'll be diving into them one at a time, but I find they are often very brief in a way that makes the game easy to go through, but also leaves you potentially sometimes wanting a bit as far as the clarity. Uh, for the most part, though, the game is fairly easy to understand. Uh, very easy chat. They also have a set of, of tutorial cards you can go through over here. Uh, tutorial cards that will give you a drill cards, they're called, that will give you good ways to understand the concept of the game uh, past just reading through the rules. Again, very quick game overview, playing the game is a handful of pages, probably three pages of rules over here, or six technically if you're talking about a spread, and then from there you have the advanced rules, and then some team stuff over here. Speaking of teams, what you're going to have in the game is you're going to have this giant stack of cards, which are not actually teams you have access to. I mean, theoretically, you could proxy them in by using the teams you have, but I, I don't know if I would do that. But you have these teams over here, a giant stack of teams, each giving you small stat adjustments and potential different abilities for the characters. Most teams are going to consist of three three cards, three three basic linesmen over here, and then specific types of cards, specific type of characters, one of each. There are some breaks to that format, but for the most part, like over here, we can see a different format. But over here, for the most part, you're going to have three and then one, one, and one, each giving you different abilities for those one, one, and one, and then stats for all the various characters as well as you go through that. And these are all teams you'll have to buy separately if you want to have access to them. And these, by the way, are all push to fit miniatures. We'll talk more about that as we get into the things I don't like category, but you do have to assemble the miniatures. Uh, no glue required, push to fit, but you'll require clippers and the process and all that stuff. Not the hardest to assemble, but certainly assembly required. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking. Starting off the bat, what this game is thematically fun. The game is thematically fun as you are not just playing through a sports game, you are playing through a game in which, yes, there are opportunities to have those cover plays where you throw that ball across the field, you run into the touchdown, and you score a goal. But also, you're doing things along the way. 
Maybe you specifically wanted to throw a touchdown this time because you wanted to split, throw the ball four spaces, getting a, getting a challenge card. Maybe you specifically wanted to engage in a risky throw where you might actually have to, have to roll a stat modifier around that throw because you're trying to get a challenge card. Maybe if you score a touchdown, maybe if you run into the touchdown this, score, this turn, you're going to get points there. Maybe if you stop one of your opponents, you'll score points there. Maybe if you pick up the ball, you'll score points there. The challenge cards all give you different ways to score points. And the combination of trying to score a touchdown while scoring an extra bonus point or two through, through challenge cards can be a big swing in a game where a six point lead where, where a game where a 10 point lead can result in you winning the game scoring six points in a solid touchdown while setting yourself up for a strong defensive posture can absolutely push the victory in this game it is about both the thematic play as well as the crunching your opponents into the ground to stop them from getting in your way while scoring points as well for this break some bones card where you both get three points and also injure an opponent which is something i've always really wanted to do and you can do it when you're playing through blitz bowl and so the game has a thematic fun to it where it's both combat and sports at the same time and it works well in what it's doing. The game is fast paced for the most part. It can drag sometimes and in some situations we'll talk more about that, but for the most part the game moves fairly quickly. Whether you get 10 points ahead of an opponent, which can be a really quick game if you uh, get a few lucky turns in a row, alternatively even going through the challenge cards. Challenge cards I find are for the most part picked up at one or two around, and with 24 challenge cards in play, that means you're looking at somewhere between 12 to 24 rounds, and that's between, not rounds, but each person having their own team, and so you're going to have 12, 24, I guess, well I guess 6 to 12 full rounds as far as a turn each going on and the game moves fairly quickly because of that, especially once you start getting those bonus cards in play, because those bonus cards really free up the game. Those, those static three turns that you have, which at first are, are sometimes just not enough to get things done. Three turns can be enough to, sure, pick up the ball, throw it, and then continue running through the game, and that can be great, but also three turns cannot be enough if your opponent has the ball, if the game's more complicated in the game state, if you have players who are next to the ball in such a way that you can't pick up the ball because you can't run into the spot. You cannot pick up the ball unless you're doing a run action, which means trying to move into a mark action actually results in the ball just bouncing somewhere else and so whenever the ball is being covered effectively by an opponent that completely changes how fast you can move things and those challenge cards will absolutely those bonus play cards will give you the opportunity to do extra things that you might need to given the game state at the table and those bonus cards and the game state in general and the three actions you have they all give you the opportunity for clever play in the game they give you the opportunity for yes the basic I'm um, doing x y and z back and forth but then there's times where you see an opportunity for something more there's times where you see an opportunity to well if I crushed you here and I grab the ball there then maybe I can't even like there are times where you'll be covering yourself with your with your teammates specifically ensuring that other players cannot get into into close combat with them the game does allow for defensive for offensive for risky it allows for a whole bunch of ways to approach the game and opportunities to feel clever while approaching that game as far as things i don't like Sometimes three actions feels a bit stalemate or slow as the game progresses. And this is true especially early game, and we kind of touched upon this already, but sometimes in the game three actions can just feel like, okay great, I'm just going to stomp on you, try to take the ball, and then wait for you to do the exact same thing back to me. And that will happen. You do have to have those breakout moments where you're able to grab the ball and toss it backwards to an opponent so you actually have a degree of safety, and that, and that teammate, not to an opponent, to a teammate, toss it backwards to a teammate so you have the degree of safety, and that, that so your teammates are covered by other players along Along the way. Sometimes you have to break the pattern of being offensive in order to be a bit defensive to set yourself up for actually getting something done next turn. The game can have stalemate turns and the game can drag sometimes because of it. Now the challenge cards always disappear at a minimum of one per round, or I guess I should say the option of a minimum one per round, meaning if ever, if ever the challenge cards don't completely clear, then you have the opportunity to take one out of play, which keeps the game moving forward, but the game can drag if things aren't happening. If the players are playing too defensively, if the players are not being reactive enough and taking opportunities uh, into, into account, then the game can drag sometimes, or the individual turns can drag as you go back and forth without really feeling that strong sense of progress. And then secondly, there is miniature assembly required. That may not be a problem for many of you, especially if you're watching this because you know it's a Games Workshop product and I imagine you're fine with it. These miniatures assemble really nicely. They assemble, let me go ahead and show you one or two of them. They have some really solid miniatures over here, but the games assemble fairly nicely, uh, fairly quickly. They're push to fit miniatures and they work very well as far as, you know, quickly cl clipping them out and assembling everything. But at the end of the day, nicely or not, this is assembly required and if you don't have the tools or the interest in that, well then understand that's what you're signing up for when you get these or any of the expansion packs along the way. As far as what I can see, others not liking, 
First of all, the game forces you to buy entirely new teams for what seems to be minimal adjustments to the actual team. These stat cards over here, these giant deck of cards over here, they all give you small stat adjustments as far as what the players do, and then often like one or two interesting abilities, and then you have to buy entire teams to go through that to get those different cards, for the most part where they're not significantly different. There are some teams that do seem to be much more compelling in how different they are, but this is a game where you can have a giant box full of extra stuff with minor adjustments to how they actually play, which might be great for you but i don't know necessarily just how much they change up the game and whether how many of these you'll actually want to to dive into again there are some some that seem more interesting sort more seem more different but for the most part a lot of them come down to a minor stat change and one extra ability and that's the difference between the teams and then secondly i would say the game gives a bit of a rich get richer feeling in the sense that the bonus cards you get are things you get for actually doing well in the game. If I achieve two challenges, then I get two bonus cards, which can help me push the game further ahead because next turn I have two extra bonus adjustments or modifiers or extra turns or things I can do that you otherwise can't. An early lead in the game can result in early bonus cards, can result in you continuing to charge forward as I struggle to actually stay in the game. Now the good news is the game actually generally ends pretty quickly when that happens. By being 10 points ahead, you win. There's no elongated dragging out game where I know you're ahead and I know you're winning and I can't keep up. So if ever game if the game ever does get too far ahead in that sense, the game does end, but it can still be a little bit frustrating to have a bit of a rich get richer. If I play well, I get more bonuses and if I play poorly, I get less bonuses and that can result in well a very quick turnaround when the game happens. As far as final thoughts on Blitzball, Blitzball is my first foray into the Warhammer-esque style of I don't know, melee combat. I remember playing Blitz Bowl, the card game back in the day, but I never actually played the miniatures version of this, and Blitz Bowl was fun and compelling and rewarding, and it reminds me fairly similarly of Trick Shot, a different game that gave you a bit of a sports theme to it, but Trick Shot with a, a significantly more increased focus on the stomping your opponents into the ground as they try to make armor rolls to desperately save themselves from dying or temporarily being reallocated to the dugout, as it were. But this is a game that gives you that, that combination. It gives you that combination of a tactical skirmish game along with a sports arena behind it that drives the game forward in different ways. And it does so in a way that is fun, that gives you opportunities for clever play, that makes you feel both like a tactical skirmish game and like a game which I'm trying to throw the ball so we can complete the final touchdown, and it gives you those opportunities and it does so fairly well. At the same time, the depth of the experience is, well, a lot of dice rolling and a lot of hoping for the best, opportunities for clever play with an opportunity for smashing each other into the ground. It gives me both things that I thoroughly enjoyed while also not being 100% my genre and style of game. For me, this one's a 3.5 out of 5. I really enjoyed aspects of it. I had a lot of fun going through the process of exploring the game and exploring the tactics and the strategies and the different maps and all those things. This board is double-sided over here. Uh, at the end of the day, this one is a solid game, one that I enjoyed and one that I can recommend. Speaking of recommendations, as far as other game recommendations, if you're looking for other stuff, first of all, Super Fantasy Brawl will give you a more of a skirmish game. If you're looking for, well, more of a skirmish game, something else that gives you that sense of trying to balance objectives with killing opponents and which ones you're going to prioritize at any time, I found Super Fantasy Brawl gave me a similar thing with much more of a skirmish focus and much less of an arena combat focus. Sorry, much less of a sports focus. And then going in the reverse direction, if you're looking for more of a sports game that gives you the sports feel and challenge and accomplishment that this game did, while being you less of it as far as the as far as the miniature combat game then trick shot which i mentioned already trick shot for, is going to be a game that gives you a, a degree of push your luck of hockey combat i believe they come out with a second edition shortly which cleans up some aspects of the game but trick shot is a very solid sports game that gives you a lot of the same feeling and highs that i get out of blitz Bowl, but in i think a lot more push your luck and a lot less stomping people into the ground in any case and until next time i'm alex radcliffe from board game co hope you found this video helpful and as always i hope you have a good one